Close your eyes, watch your breath. Get some nourishment from the fact that you're staying right here. You're acting on a good intention. And as the Buddha said, it's one of the sources of food for the mind. Good intentions are good food. Our problem is that all too often we eat on intentions that are not so good. So here's an opportunity to have a consistently good intention that you stick with, so you have a good, steady source of food here. Seeing everyone coming for the celebration of the birthday reminds me of a Dharma talk that John Lee gave one time. He pointed out the three kinds of food for the mind. For the food of intentions, the food of awareness, the food of sensory contact. And he says the, sensory con the best sensory contact out there for a teacher is when you see that your students are actually practicing, serious about the practice. That's the kind of food that keeps the teacher going. As he commented, he was, he was the kind of teacher who fed off his students. He was a monster, ate his students. In other words, he ate their good practice, was nourished by their good practice. So if you want to extend the life of your teacher, you practice seriously. It doesn't mean that you believe everything he says. You take what he says and you try it out. And John Fu made the comment one time, living with the John Lee, that if you just did as you were told, he said, don't you have an independent mind? But if you went outside of what he wanted you to do, okay, so why, why, why can't you listen to me? I had the same problem, especially being an American going over to Thailand. I had lots of opinions, and I was told that my opinions were not welcome. But then when I simply did as I was told, I was scolded for not thinking for myself. So one day a John Fuang told the story of being with a John Lee. They were building an ordination hall, and they placed a foundation stone under where they thought the Buddha was going to be, on the, on the west side facing east. But as they were building the building, a John Lee changed his mind, put the image on the east side facing west. Then when it was done, someone pointed out to him that now the cornerstone with all the relics and all the amulets and all the pieces of Dharma was in a spot where people would be stepping over it, which you don't do in Thailand. And so he turned to John Fung and said, okay, tomorrow go down and move it. And John Fung's first thought was there was no way you could move that foundation stone. It was set in concrete. But he knew if he said he couldn't do it, then John Lee said, well, I'll find someone who can. So the next day, John Fung got all the able-bodied monks and novices down under the ordination hall, and they had ropes and crowbars, and they couldn't move this cornerstone. So that evening he went up and said, how about if we make a new a box for the cornerstone down under the Buddha image, open up the old one, get all the valuable things out, and move them into the new one? And John Lee shook his head, yes. And as John Fung said, this is how you show respect for your teacher. You take what you're told to do, and you try it out. And if it doesn't work, you try to figure out why it's not working. And then you go for advice. If you simply say, well, it's not working, how do we know that you've actually worked on it hard enough? And you have to show some of your own initiative in trying to figure things out. That's how the practice becomes your own. And when the teacher sees that you are becoming independent in the practice in that way, in other words, that you can be dependent, to, dependent on to continue practicing even without the teacher, then the teacher is happy to stay. If nobody's practicing, the teacher doesn't want to stay. It starts breathing short, short, short. But if the students are practicing, he wants to be long and continue his life a little bit longer because he's being well fed. So think of your practice as being food not only for you, but also for your teacher, and also an inspiration for the people around you. This is the best way you show gratitude for the fact that the Dharma has been handed down. You take it and you put it to use. After all, that's why the Buddha taught to begin with, was so that people would take it and put it to use, benefit from it. That's why he developed the perfections for so many aeons. Not that people would bow down, but that people would actually benefit. That's how you show respect, and that's how you give nourishment to the teacher in the most sustaining way.